Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Angel Bobs. I've had a bit of a struggle in the last, over the last few hours of playing. Um, things haven't gone quite as I intended. And the main reason for that is I, I started up building this depot up here for these massive trains. Because as I think you probably remember from the last episode, I thought I'd put some bigger stations over here on the on the inputs for my new massive metal processing facility in order to just bring more, more in at a time so that it could churn through it and would, I wouldn't have as many trains cluttering up the um, the railways. So I thought, right, okay, that's no problem. I'll build the bigger stations, I'll build the bigger trains. And the problem is now, though, they're all going off to... They haven't managed to split them, so they're not going... So they're um, completely separate from... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? So that the trains for the, the big trains are separate from the little train network. So I've had problems to start with, with little trains going out from the depot over here, picking up a load of ore and then bringing it along here. And because those trains are two two locomotives and two wagons, they only come up to about here. So they don't even they don't even overlap with the um, unloading system. So they don't they just don't get unloaded. And they end up going back to the depot full of stuff. So that causes problems to start with because then there's a risk of them taking that off to another station and unloading something where they shouldn't. And again, you've got the same problem here. You see that massive train is pulled in here. It's blocking the railway, the lines up here. Actually, it's not. It's just about got inside. But it's blocking entrances to the, these stations. And it's not getting loaded with anything because it doesn't fit. So it seems I've had a look at the LTN settings and it turns out there is a way to sort this out, sort of. If you go into the... Um, the combinators next to them, you can set this thing, the uh, network ID. The problem is though, I was hoping when I started doing this that there'd be a default ID on all of the ones I put down already because I wasn't, I would, I, in hindsight I should have set it but I didn't. So they're all set to blank. And I've set these ones to eight because it's, there's eight carriages on the train. It seemed like a logical way of doing it. Um, unfortunately, that doesn't actually work because it uses a sort of a, a binary system uh, of, of bit checking. So this one's a number eight. So an, a, a train with an eight or a train with a 10 or a train with any any binary value that has an eight in it will go here. And so, and the default is FFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFF
but on a sort of a bigger, hopefully on a bigger scale, it'll produce things at a higher rate and it'll be a bit less of a mess. <clears throat> I might even use some trains to bring, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of torn whether I should use trains to bring in things like titanium or tin in their ingot forms. Where's the tin? Here's the tin. So I could bring in tin ingots from here and just carry on using this processing facility. Or I could try and retire this one and move everything over to here and start building tin over here. And eventually that is what I want to do. So we'll 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 see. I, I, it's, it's a little bit open to decisions at the moment, I'll, but I'll uh, eventually I'll um, I'll decide what to do about it. Um, I've also been tinkering around a little bit here. I've got the stations in to take out the crushed stone and the uh, crystal dust, and I got one here that eventually, once it's, once it's finished, will uh, will bring in the um, uh, what do we call it mineral catalyst, and I'll have another two for the other two types of catalyst as well. So we'll get all of that onto the buses over here, and that sh that should work nicely. Uh, and yep, there's another train just doing it wrong. I should probably, when these get, actually, when these get back up to the station here, I should flick them over to manual mode. Oh, I've done, done it with that one. I should flick them all over to manual mode as they come into the station, just so they, they don't go off trying to do other things that they should that they just won't fit into. So that's quite frustrating. On a more positive note, I built up these stations here that are collecting in the, um, the various different minerals into the big stations for loading up the new uh, new facility. So I've got one here, as you can see, is the rubite. I've got a nice big mine here digging away. These are the uh, electric mining drill four, so these are producing really, really quickly. Um, that said, it's only the first few that are actually able to produce because there's only so fast I can load it into the um, load it down the belts. But you know that that's that's absolutely plenty. There's a hundred thousand in each in in these now, so. That's more than enough. I can just leave. I can. I can leave that. And when, when, and when I need some, that'll fill a train up easily. I've got another one here for the um, steritite, uh, crotinium. I think there's one. What's the other one? Bobmonium. There's, I'm sure I made one for bobmonium as well. There it is. Yeah. Oh yes, this was an interesting one. So there weren't any good bobmonium patches inside my um, territory and places that I could I could get to easily. I mean, there was this one, but it, these two rather. They, but. I felt they were a bit in the way of possible future expansion. So this one here is also slightly bigger. Oh dear. Um, but this was it was it wasn't on it was on, on a sort of little island out in the middle with some biters on it. So I rolled up here with my artillery train, shelled the boss name out of them, and then built an over across the island here, laid down some landfill for the bridge, and squared the island off a bit in order to build the um, build this mine up here. So I'm quite pleased with that. It's not, it was a nice little isolated island. Um, that I've now joined onto the mainland. And again, you've got the same sort of thing here. These these warehouses are getting filled up. That one's full already. That's that's amazing. So these are getting gradually filled up uh, with bobmonium. That one was it's a bit behind. I don't know why. Um, but let's not worry about that. So yeah, that's going well. We've got all of all of the ores coming in. I haven't bothered to do jeevalite or um, sapphirite uh, big mines yet because they're being adequately fed from from these two patches. As you can see, these have come to a complete halt. So that's that's fine for now. I don't need to worry about that. But at some point in the near future, well, there's a big sapphirite patch there. There's a jeevalite patch. I'm sure there's one. There. I'm sure they're around somewhere. Or maybe by the time I decide I need them, I'll, I'll have expanded further. And one of the things I've been doing quite deliberately is very much expanding eastwards because the, the spawn point, as you've probably seen every to every single time I've died, is somewhere over here in the middle of the in the middle of my power plants. So I think I think it's about here that I was spawning in. Um, so that's zero as far as the game is concerned. And the further you go away from your origin point, the richer the um, ore patches get. So if I look at this one here, that's a steritite of 5 million. That's not bad. It's 9 million there. But if we go over here, the steritite patches are up at 11 million. Or, I can't see that one. It's gone off the edge of the map. There's a tiny one there. It's 4 million. Big one there, 18 million. So as you can see, the further away you get, the bigger, they, the, bigger the patches get. So the longer you can leave a mine there before you have to replace it. There's a 24 million sapphire patch there, for example, the, and the oil patches get bigger, it's 5,000 and so and so on. So the f and um, 131,000 percent of the, um, thermal water. So the further away you get from the origin, the bigger the patches get. And I've n I, I know in vanilla it's quite common to build up a sort of an armored train and just push out a massive long track and to travel a long, long way from the origin as soon as you get to the point where you're ready to, where you, where, when you can, because then you get the absolutely enormous mineral patches out further away. 
and you, you there's and, and so you don't need to go out building up outposts anything like as often I don't feel I'm ready to do that, to be honest. The um, the biters in in um, Angel Bobs are so much more dangerous, especially these massive pink Leviathan ones. Well, it's the bi the biters are a lot more dangerous than the spitters, actually. But the Leviathan size ones are it's incredible how much damage they can soak up. And look at look how big they are compared to um, compared to my turrets. They're sort of three four times as big as a plasma turret, and plasma turrets are quite big as as well. There's one. There's a Leviathan, and that's another spitter. Um, but yeah, so they're really rather dangerous. They're, there we go. There's a Leviathan biter. They're they're horrendous. One of those coming in will is actually a, a serious concern. But fortunately, it doesn't seem to produce too many of them. Um, there we go. There's a two percent chance of it spawning a Leviathan spitter. Um, two percent chance of spawning a Leviathan biter. So does that mean one in fifty is a? Oh, and it consumes ten times as much. But no, significantly more pollution than any other one would as well. So. That, that's why there don't seem to be all that many of them around. But when they do come charging in, they are very, very dangerous. They can push through. They can shrug off at least a couple of uh, plasma turret rounds to the face, and then go up and get cosy with a with a set of these turrets before they get um, before they actually get taken down. So that's why I now have a uh, plasma turret every pylon instead of earlier when I was laying them out. Um, I think I've done that everywhere now because it's got dangerous everywhere. Oh, here we go. You see this this area down here. Okay, there's a patch of them down here, and then there's only a couple here and a couple here. This was from back when I was finding um, plasma turrets were really expensive, and I could only make the odd one at a time. <laughs> Fortunately, now it's got a bit they've got a bit cheaper. But you can see the sort of size of attacks I've been getting by the size of these patches of um, of drops from the from the biters. I've seen bigger than that as well. I'm sure there's another huge huge one there. Oh, there we go. Yes. So there's been well, each of these specks of, um, of alien artifact is is a biter that has attacked the base, and because of the way Factorio deals with um, with items dropped on the ground, if if you drop another one here where there isn't room for it, it will appear on the edge of the on the edge of the square of where you've got them. So this square just gets bigger and bigger as they as more and more get killed in the middle here. Um, so yeah, it's a bit it looks a bit silly, um, but eventually, well. These, they just get the, the patches get bigger and bigger. Eventually, maybe I'll go out and harvest some of them. But at the moment, I've got so many alien artifacts. I just, yeah, there's 3,000 big purple ones, for example. There's, there's over 500 of all of the the big ones. Thousands, literally thousands of all the small ones. And so at the moment, I'm using the purple ones for, um, sorry, pink ones for making turrets, and that's about it. So there's there's no point in going in and. Um, deliberately going out and harvesting them. The other thing is because I'm doing so much stuff in areas that I've reclaimed and gone through fighting the biters, there's all these patches of them left lying around on the floor. So as I run around or as I build belts up, I end up just picking them up anyway. And so there's, I, fr I frequently um, end up summoning all the bots in like this just to take away all of the all of the um, artifacts that I produce and then you get, you get this flood of bots coming in and just taking them all away which is really nice it saves me having to uh, carry them all over there myself but there's just so many of them <laughs> it's ridiculous okay I think that pretty much covers what I've been up to recently as I say the LTN stuff is a bit of a mess so my first job I think is going to be going around and sorting that out and just tweaking every single station to have a um, ha have the have, have a network ID set on it so that they don't all so that the trains don't try and go to the wrong places. I've noticed I can set minimum train lengths on these stations as well, so maybe that would help. Um, I might do it on the pickup stations rather than the drop-off stations actually, because I've noticed that um, pickup stations are really easy to change. Because let's see if I can find a pickup station. Here we go. Pickup stations. All you have set on the on them is well, you can set a um, I'm not sure what that train with a hash... Oh, that's the number of trains that can go there. So all, all you need to set on them is at what point it triggers to say, yes, there's stuff available, and that's completely item agnostic. So in this case, it just says 10,000. If it's got 10,000 of anything, it'll make it available for trains to come and pick it up. Um, and also there's one train allowed to go there at a time. That's really, really easy. I can copy and paste that one. Whereas if we look at a drop-off station like this one, these aren't really programmed very well. They're a bit, there we go. This is a better drop-off station. So you have... This one's saying don't the the 500,000 there on the red the red um, chest icon says 
don't come and pick stuff up from the station unless there's at least 500,000 there and, and that'll never happen in, in theory. So you'll never get any a train coming to try and pick something up from there. The 8,000, again, is also also completely agnostic. It's saying, I want to have at least 8,000 of anything. I um, bring, no, bring me 8,000 at a time, at least. The next one is saying, only have one train here at a time. The final one is the one that's specific to every station. And that's saying, I want to have, I want to imagine there's minus 20,000 more or 20,000 less of the specific item that that station is requesting. And so that's what causes the, the uh, station to trigger and request a drop off. And that has to be specific to the thing that the individual station is requesting. So this one has Invar, this one has the um, Cobalt Steel, this one has Bricks, this one has Bronze or Brass, I think that's Bronze, this one has Aluminium and so on. So every single one has to be different. And that means you can't just go around and copy and paste them. However, if the train won't go to the pickup station, then it also won't go to the drop-off station because it won't have the stuff, so it won't get assigned that job. So I think if I go around to all the pickup stations, like like this one where the lead's coming from, and this one where the titanium's coming from, and so on, it's still going to be a big job, but at least it's just going to be a copy and paste job, so it's going to be a lot easier because of that. The slightly frustrating thing is I can't do it remotely, as far as I'm aware, you can't program a, um, a Dubri, um, <laughs> a combinator, constant combinator through the through the through the RoboPort network without ripping it up and putting it down again. And because it's linked to the um, the Red Circuit network, I don't think there's an easy way of doing that. I don't think I can't pull I can't even pull it out with um, with the bots and then place another one down there because it won't be linked to the pylon. And I think. I could potentially pull out the pylon in the box and then put them back down again, but then they wouldn't be linked. Or maybe if I just pull out the maybe if I just pull out the boxes and then have a blueprint with the box and the pylon and the link. Maybe that will do it. Hmm. That's worth a try. Because if I can do it with the bots, rather than having to go out there and do every single one by hand, that will make it so much easier. I still won't be able to do the uh, the drop off stations, but as long as as long as I do all the pickup stations and every other station I make from now on, I think it should be all right. And those are both manageable jobs. Right. Well, that's something for me to do for um, in the run up to the next episode. Um, and uh, well, I'll get on I'll get on with that, and we'll see how it goes. And I'll uh, I'll tell you about it next time. Thanks for watching.